Welcome to lesson A15. In this first video, we will continue to learn about if statements, and in particular, we will look at nested if statements. In the next video for this lesson, you'll learn how to convert strings and integers within your code. In this video, you will continue to learn to use logical statements in your code by adding increasingly complex criteria to your if statements. We will add this complexity to our code by using nested if statements, and then we will also dive deeper into how to use indentation when formatting our code. Okay, let's get started. In lesson A14, you learned to structure simple if statements in Python. But what happens if you need to have multiple criteria? For example, if you only wanted to print a receipt message if the sale value was $1 and the item was red, for this, you would need to use a nested if statement. A nested if statement describes an if statement that's inside of and dependent on another if statement. This can be used to add extra layers of decisions that you might want to make happen in your program. All right, remember back in the last lesson we just, when we discussed if, else, and LF statements and how proper indentation was critical to Python understanding when a line of code was conditional on another line of code? When formatting nested if statements, indentation is also very important. This tells Python when statements are dependent upon each other. All right, let's look at an example. This code simulates the type of code that might open a lock. Now, the lock requires a three-digit code and the lock will only open with a code three, four, five. What will happen when the digits three, four, five are entered? Okay, let's work our way through the code and take a look at how it's set up. The code digits are initially programmed in using the variables X, Y, and Z. And I'll put that note on the bottom so we can reference it. Now, the first line of code is an if condition. X equals three and will be evaluated. If true, first digit accepted will be printed to the shell, and the next condition will be evaluated. So let's look at the next condition. If y equals four evaluates as true, then the second digit accepted will be printed to the shell, and the third condition will be evaluated. If the third condition, z equals five, evaluates as true, then the third digit accepted and lock open will both be printed to the shell. So the only way lock open can ever be printed to the shell is if all three conditions preceding it evaluate as true. If any of the digits entered in each step do not equal the expected digit, then the rest of the code will be skipped and the lock won't open. Now let's take a quick moment to be very clear on how indentation is working in this code. Remember in the last lesson where we talked about using four spaces and not the tab key to indent a line of code? Notice in this example that the first set of conditions are indented four spaces. The second set are indented four spaces from the first set and so on. So by the time you get to those last two print statements, those lines are indented 12 spaces. Now I realize you're just getting your feet wet in terms of writing code, and this is a fairly long block of code compared to what you've seen previously. So if you weren't quite following how this code works, I'd suggest pausing the video backing it up and going through this part again, following the code line by line. Okay, so if we enter all the digits correctly in the last example, the lock will open. But what happens if the statements aren't properly indented? Python no longer sees them as dependent upon one another and you can't obtain the conditional buildup where all three digits must be entered correctly for the lock to open. Okay, so let's take a look at this code. What happens if the user enters 555? Five, five, five? Okay, so the first digit entered is five, and since the first digit is wrong, the first condition will evaluate as false, so no message will be printed to the shell. But because this code isn't properly indented, Python will still move right on and evaluate the second condition, even though the first digit was incorrect. Without indentation, Python doesn't realize it's not supposed to proceed to the next line of code. Now, since we were entering 555, the second digit is also incorrect, right? That was supposed to be a four. So no message will be printed to the shell and Python will move on to the third condition. 
And this is where the problem becomes really obvious. If we enter 555, then this third digit is correct, right? So the condition will evaluate as true and both third digit accepted and lock open will be printed to the shell. The lock was allowed to open even though two of the three digits were incorrect because without indentation, Python treated all three conditions as independent of one another. Now, nested if statements can be a bit tricky at first. So if your goal is to have multiple if statements trigger an action, then make sure your indentation is clearly communicating to Python that the conditions are dependent. Now, it's always a good idea to test your program to make sure it is operating as designed and that incorrect entries don't generate unexpected behavior. Okay, before you move on to the next video, let's take a few moments and review the concepts we've just discussed. Nested if statements are handy if you need to have multiple criteria and decisions dependent on, on other decisions within the program. When working with if statements, indentation is critical, not only because the conditional statement needs to be indented, but we use indentation to communicate what criteria are dependent on other criteria so the code is nested within other code. Like the example we talked through with the three digit lock, without proper indentation, Python doesn't understand that all three digits must be entered correctly. Okay, now that you understand how to use nested if statements, go ahead and move on to the next video for this lesson, where we'll discuss strings versus integers and how to convert one to the other in your Python code.